So in this video I'm going to talk about a persistent myth which is that cruise control will cause you to lose control in the wet and I'm going to explain why that isn't true. Now there's various versions of this myth floating around the internet and I put one on screen so you can see what it looks like. The short answer is it's wrong. Cruise control cannot cause your vehicle to hydroplane, far less fly off the road at 10, 15, 20 kilometers an hour or whatever the myth happens to dream up. However, there are risks associated with cruise control and particularly in the wet and we're gonna to come to those. Now I'm going to explain why that myth isn't true and that starts with understanding what a tyre does. Now on a road car a tyre has tread and the primary purpose of the tread on a road car is to disperse water in wet conditions. Now the contact patch of the tyre um, looks like this and the contact patch is the amount of rubber actually hitting the road. Um, obviously there's a flat section on the tyre there and it's typically maybe about that size. Now in wet conditions it looks a little bit different. The first part of the tyre is taken up with dispersing water out of the way and then the rest of the tyre can grip. This, this, I haven't made it very gradual but imagine that that's a bit more gradual and that is the way uh, tyres disperse water and you can see that on the road a lot of water is thrown up around a tyre. Formula One cars also demonstrate that very well indeed. Now when we get to the point where the tyre cannot disperse all the water effectively then we have aquaplaning or hydroplaning and the water's in effect on a thin film, so the tyre is on a thin film of water and that means it cannot grip and that's definitely a road safety issue. Now whether or not a tyre hydroplanes is driven by two things. One, the amount of water that the tyre has to get out of the way, depth of water for example. Secondly, the ability of the tyre to clear the water out of the way. So if you've got quite a bit of water, let's say 10 mil deep or something like that, um, then I, I, I high enough speed the tyre's not going to be able to deal with that. Similarly if you've got a tyre which is nearly bald unlike this one which has got decent tread on it then the tyre's not going to be able to disperse that water effectively so it's a combination of those two things and um, speed obviously plays a big factor as well because the faster you drive the less time the tyre has to actually disperse that water as the tyre travels from there to there so speed's a factor as well. Now an interesting point about narrow versus wide tyre slightly diverted from the topic here which is that the contact patch on a wide tyre looks like this and on a narrow tyre it looks like that. It's actually the same size, it's just very nearly the same size. You can look at my wide versus narrow tyre video for that. Now which one of these is going to perform better in the wet? Well the answer is the narrow because it's got less distance of water compared to the wide one and also it's got a longer distance here for the tyre to grip the ground so your wide narrow tyres tend to be so your, your narrow tyres tend to perform better in wet conditions than the wide tyres. Now for cruise control and that's got one job only which is to keep the car travelling at a constant speed. If it's adaptive cruise control then it will sense the car in front and then it will vary its speed according to the car in front but not beyond whatever maximum is set. For the purposes of what we're talking about adaptive cruise control is the same as normal cruise control so I'll put the Elise away. Now how does the car know how fast it needs to go? Well we're going to use the radio controlled car for that one and in the case of most cars um, you only drive one set of wheels whether you drive all four wheels or not is kind of irrelevant here but um, there will be a shaft coming from the motor to the driven wheels here and um, the wheels uh, the cruise control speed is taken off those driven wheels so let's look at what actually happens then so we have the um, car driving along and I'm just going to put a bit of resistance on it lot like that and you can see it's slowed down now and that's equivalent to the car driving along at 100 k's now there's wind resistance etc etc then those tires are going to hydroplane so there's going to be very little grip on them this is what's going to happen you see as I reduce the grip lifting up in the air in this case the, the tires very very quickly or wheels spin very much um, more quickly. Now that will happen regardless of whether cruise control is activated or your foot is on the accelerator. But here's what happens with cruise control. You can see that the wheels are going to spin slowly then fast. 
the cruise control computer will go, hang on, I'm meant to be driving at 100 k's an hour here and suddenly these wheels are going at 102, 103. And the cruise control computer is going to instantly back off the accelerator to bring that speed down. Probably quicker than you would manage to do so if you just had your foot on the accelerator normally and the wheels hydroplate. So the fact that cruise control somehow speeds things up is just a complete nonsense. And there's probably one car out there, maybe more, which takes the wheel speed off the front wheels as opposed to the driven wheels, but modern cars, they will take it off the driven wheels. And in fact, with, with modern cars with electronic stability control, which has been mandatory since about uh, 2011 in Australia and around the rest of the world, they've actually got wheel speed sensors on all four wheels. So so they know exactly how fast a car is going and also your sensor so they can tell if the car's doing this or pitching up or pitching down or whatever else and if anything is out of line they, that will they will back the throttle off the car will back the throttle off and it will also even individually maybe steer a little bit apply a little bit of torque to um, brake into each wheel just to keep the car straight so the way cars are designed with taking the cruise control speed off the driven wheels or the prop shaft to it means that if there is a loss of traction then that engine is going to back off the throttle so the myth simply cannot be true. So here's a Formula One car about to take a corner and take a look at that standing water on the left. The car is going to hydroplane its left wheel, spin and take a look at the front left wheel as it tries to get rid of the water. Okay, so then let's look at a scenario where we've got a rear drive car like this, um, but the front wheels hydroplane. And when they hydroplane, well, because we're taking the speed off the rear wheels, the car's not going to slow down. I mean, that's okay you don't want it to because if you've got a sudden catastrophic loss of traction such as suddenly your wheels being on a film film of water what you don't want to do is anything at all you don't want to brake you don't want to accelerate you don't want to turn you just want to keep going exactly as you are and hope that the grip returns and it probably will because in most hydroplaning situations then you don't not going to go into a situation where you've got all four wheels suddenly hydroplaning that that's fairly wet but it's going to be one wheel fairly transiently and if you were to slam on the brakes or accelerate that point that, that's a bad um, a bad thing to do now if you are in a situation where you are going to get all four wheels hydroplaning well that's probably driver inattentiveness and that's actually the risk with cruise control generally because if you see this huge amount of water on the road and it's one of those um, roads where the sort of grooves have been worn by heavy trucks that's on you as a driver to be attentive and to look at the road and go you know what it's really wet there's water in these grooves um, on the road i think i should slow down and that's to do with you not to do with cruise control and that's the risk of potentially cruise control, i.e. you're not attentive and cruise control drives you into a dangerous situation, but that's actually no different to you being inattentive and having your foot on the throttle and driving yourself into a dangerous situation. Now there is a, another risk with cruise control which I want to talk about and that is trailer towing and I've actually got a video called Trailer Sway Crash Survivors where that was a contributing factor to their crash and it works like this. So you on the flat and you set the cruise control for let's say um, 90 k's an hour all's good you go uphill and it's the car will do its best to maintain 90 or increase the throttle or kick down a gear automatically if needs be so over the top of the hill you're doing 90. you're coming down the other side of the hill now some cruise controls are smart enough to be able to reduce the um, throttle or they'll, in fact, will reduce the throttle but apply the brakes to keep you at, keep you at 90 but not all of them some of them will just let the car go above 90 it will chop the throttle um, and and that's all, all, all it can do now if that happens then you've actually got two factors potentially increasing sway one you're increasing speed so the speed's crept up to 100 k's an hour and that's that could be a potential sway situation secondly you're coming downhill so the trailer is trying to overtake the car so if you are not aware that your cruise control re um, doesn't retard speed coming down a hill and you're towing you could find yourself going faster downhill than what you expected and that can lead to sway but again is that cruise control's fault or is that driver inattention and not understanding the vehicle you be the judge so to recap 
cruise control does not cause your vehicle to hydroplane or aquaplane or fly off the road. What causes that is the inability of the tyre to disperse water effectively so it can grip and that's a function um, of how good the tyre is at dispersing the water as well as um, how much water there is to disperse. There are risks with cruise control mostly through driver inattentiveness and so you should always be attentive and not just rely on it, not even adaptive cruise control. So I hope you found this video useful. Any questions please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.